And again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and joining us. Again, we're outside of our normal operations on our Thursday nights. We're, we have a special guest, so a special time and a special day this week. But thank you for joining us here at uh, Creative Real Estate University on our Facebook group and our YouTube channel. And tonight we have a very special guest. We have Jessa Roberts, and we're going to be talking about private money lending, one of my favorite topics, and all things related about funding. And who puts the fun in funding? Jessa does. So, <laughs> um, how you been, Jessa? It's been like two days since I've talked with you. I know. It's been wild in real estate. <laughs> Everything is been very successful actually <laughs> you've had uh, a whirlwind several weeks i guess um and it's probably been longer than that or, and bigger than that um but you recently were out you won the trip to go see pace yeah that was fantastic how did that go it went really well i think um heather heather and i are gonna plug more into the community um as you know kind of our topic let me make sure that i'm trying to pull pull everybody up on another screen possibly if i can do this quickly Hi, Heather. Hey. <laughs> um so it it went really great um it, it's hard it was like a whirlwind of a couple of days <laughs> he always seems to be on like high gear all the time like level 10 all the time is that how he is in real life yes yeah. yes it surprised me you know i'm i'm about the same age and i was like i don't think i can keep up with this pace <laughs> pace that's an interesting so, pace that's for sure yeah i know pace that's a crazy pace uh heather are you in sub two as well Oh, her, her picture's there, but maybe she froze. Oh, so heather has been in, in sub two a long time and yeah. Gator. All right. So um, longer than me, a lot longer than me, in fact. So Heather and I work on the private capital division together. Is there some announcement there coming from uh, Pace's group or is this uh, something still in work in progress or is this something you're doing on your own? All the above. Uh, we well, you know, funny story. Um, my goal in real estate was to get little eco resorts going and get things going in nature that were really special that people could visit combined with long-term rental pieces to the property. So, you know, the uh, experience and then resort type property would be the main feature, but then there would be other things like maybe some storage units somewhere or something that's stabilizing the income on the properties. So when I started that journey, I was watching um, Rob, you know, who's on bigger pockets a yes. lot now. Um, and he was talking about his Airbnb ventures, right, on YouTube. And he started saying, you know, something really strange happened where he started publishing content. And then he said every week someone would contact him with a million dollars, two million dollars, a million dollars. And he said he was completely unprepared. And so I've been a YouTuber for a very long time and I thought, well, crap, I have to create an entire money division and learn about private capital before we even venture down this road of helping people open these little eco resorts. And um, so that's how this all started. And then I joined Gator thinking I would just be multiplying my funds. Um, and and then I realized there were, there. I, I don't wanna say, problems but there were problems slash needs major needs um going on where people had all their this capital and they wanted to deploy it people were multiplying their capital too fast and not paying attention to their taxes <laughs> people were uh doing all kinds of things so coming from the business world i was like oh i you know 
maybe we can jump in here and really help sub two and gator and beyond, you know, cause I have a quite a following of, of estheticians. So that's a little background story on how I fell into helping with private capital, but now our, our network is getting really big, really fast, mainly because there was a need, you know, for a lot of, of help. Um, it's, I think kind of scary when people are deploying their capital, there's all of these pieces, you know, that it's not rocket science as Heather would say, but if you don't do it correctly, um, you can end up losing your, your funds. But when you do do it correctly, it's very, it's very safe. It's a good investment, you know, and you can do it over and over again. We also wanted to make it more passive uh, because. And that's one of the things we, we, we say about real estate. And that's one of the things that we like about this investing strategy is when we talk about an investment backed by real estate, that's supposed to mean safe. And if yeah. we do it correctly, it is a very safe uh, investment because not only are you yeah. secured by some uh, income producing asset, but that asset is a, has a, is a tangible asset. You can actually take it up and sell that and get your money back if things go sideways, right? If it, but it has to be structured yeah. correctly. It has to be underwritten correctly. The paperwork has to be done right, and that's the scary part, I think, for a lot of people getting started in the lending side, right? So we have a lot of PML people in our group, and a lot of uh, some Gator crossover people who want to be uh, Gator grownups, you know, whatever that next yeah. level is, you know, if in the short term, um, and we're getting into the private money in the longer term. Um, but the paperwork has to be right and the processes have to be right. And you don't want to jump in too fast and get in over your head because we have heard the horror stories of people losing their funds or getting burned. Nope. Somehow you got muted, Jess, huh? Sorry about that. I think I flipped my screen over too far. <laughs> I'm like still a newbie. Zoomer, as horrible as that sounds, but um, we've gotten more than one message like that. I think the most heartbreaking one I got was someone that lost one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and it was his entire self-directed IRA. But, you know, Heather, Heather and I have been working collectively at least a year and a half, you know, doing deals and have never lost someone's funds like that. You know, there, there've been maybe once where there was a delay or we had to exercise, you know, the deed in lieu or something like that, um, where, where the property, uh, I think what ended up getting negotiated was an extension, but mm -hmm. that's up to the PML. You know, if, if they do not want to give an extension, then everything's liquidated and, everything's paid, not just the principal, but the um, interest, late fees, you know what, the way it's collateralized is everything gets paid if there's a default and the property has to be liquidated. And again, that's so. the, the importance of doing your due diligence up front, right? And making sure the deal is structured correctly, because if you get into it and there's not enough equity yeah. there, equity reserves well you go the deal goes sideways right and you have to go in now and liquidate the property well you might not get all your money back you might you might end up owing money if, it, if you didn't do it correctly the way okay. you're gonna if you're way you're gonna show us how to do it is you go into the deal smart and correctly then it's really a win-win situation you say the worst thing yeah. that could happen is we have to take the property back but if you structure a deal correctly, that's actually a win. Right. Yep. It's, I mean, it's, it's a little uh, annoyance, but it's not a loss. It's not going to be like the guy. In fact, that, that poor guy, you know, he's a, he's in uh gator, I believe, he, you know, came to me and said, I only have 40 or 50,000. Will you help me? And I said, of course I will help you. It was such a sad story, but you know, these things do happen and if if you're an action taker and a go-getter and you get linked in with the right people you can recover too you know real estate the good news is there's 
uh, big rewards, right? Sometimes there's some big mistakes along the way, but my goal with helping people and Heather's goal is they never have to go through, you know, that type of, of loss. And when I met Heather, uh, the way she was structuring specifically when money was lent out and it came back, I was kind of the expert in doing JV, like equity partnership deals. I'm very, very good at that and the contracts and the LLCs and all those things. And Heather um, had been doing a lot of deals where people were deploying their um, funds into different types of real estate deals and then getting their interest, you know, per se back. But sometimes we don't refer to it as certain things, you know, for legal purposes too. So that's another kind of layer to this. And I'm sure you guys have talked about that, the usury laws and the, you know, so sometimes all of it has to be structured as a partnership situation. Or if you get a huge project, you know, like you and I were talking about, then you got to get into um, syndicate, syndicates. Yes. So it, and yeah. we'll, we'll cross all those bridges. Um, before we get too deep in the weeds and get started, yeah. how did you get in real estate? Tell us your background. I'm sure you didn't go like sitting in high school thinking about what do I want to be when I grow <laughs> up? And we're like, boy, I want to be a private money lender. How did you, what did your journey look like? You know, I was in the spa world for many years and I spent the last like 10 or 15 years also coaching spas and businesses. Um, I knew, I knew I wanted to help people when I was young and that has never stopped. But when I was old enough to learn about investing, you know, and I, I knew there were certain sectors, I never really liked, um, stocks, even though I'm going to have to open up my horizons in the future. And so my favorite investment category was real estate. I just didn't know how to break into it in a big way. And then my second favorite category was businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and by default, with what I was doing, I got really good in the business sector. But I have yet to, you know, buy and sell businesses, but it, I was listening to Abraham and Pace and it's very similar, you know, to negotiating real estate, which is interesting when you're buying and selling businesses. I like it when you said so, you haven't done it yet, because I know you, no, Jess, you will do it. I will do it. That's right. Uh, so, you know, through COVID, my whole industry crashed. And so I went back to my husband and said, you know, it's time we, it's time to catapult into all of the real estate. And um, I guess the other important part of my background is I watched my dad raise private capital and open 35 restaurants. So partially through osmosis and partially through watching how it worked for years, I saw him raise capital, keep silent equity partners and they have these very successful businesses and he did it over and over and over and over again. So I think that implanted the idea in me that, oh, you know, this is something that's done in these different cat and it's not, not a big deal. It's fairly standard practice, you know, in these different sectors. So. And being able to see that in action means a mm -hmm. lot. And, and that's one of the reasons we created this group, Cindy and I, is that we wanted to be able to show people how things are done. And being part of a, a real estate investment network, you know, and talking about it and discussing it is one thing, but actually doing mm -hmm. things and accomplishing them is, is the different, right? So we don't want yeah. just people here seeing how it's done. We want people doing things. So yeah. that's, why I, that's why I click with you so much. A, you're a giver. Um, yeah. You said it in your background, right? It, it's who you are from probably the way you were raised all the way through your life yeah. is you're just a giving yeah. person. You want to take care of people. And I love that about you. And that's, we have that throughout this community as well. It's just some fantastic yeah. people who just want to help other people. And saying that we have to make sure that when we're doing deals, 
we're doing them smartly though. Um, I saw yeah. a post today about somebody, you know, wanting to help someone who is in a, a rough spot and all the mm -hmm. people coming back saying, okay, we want to be charitable and we want to help, but you can't just go through a process and give somebody money to help them with their first deal without it being documented. You know, everybody's saying right. pump, pump the brakes on that idea for a second. Let's do it correctly. You can help somebody get through their first deal, but make sure it doesn't burn you and everybody else coming behind you. So Yes, exactly. I think, you know, what I see that's missing in that equation a lot is then I go back to my business side and I'm like, you know, all of this paperwork and all the stuff and crunching numbers and comping and all the things you have to do, it does take a lot of skill. I was talking to Pace about this. I said, because he was like, oh, all the education's there and he doesn't like seeing this happen, right, to people. And I said, I don't either, but I said, I think this is the problem is all of the people are different avatars and they have different experience and different categories and they actually do need assistance, you know, with different people. They, they will become experts, but to go, uh, go through the course and not have someone there just kind of going, uh oh, hey, you know, this piece over here, you, you forgot this piece, you know, because there's a whole bunch of steps in this process and running a business and training people and helping people with businesses who are smart people, they would miss, miss stuff, you know? So the problem is if you do that with your private capital, then uh, you can have a bigger problem, you know, on your hands later. And so I think help is needed in this category. For sure. But you can become an expert. You yep. can, it just takes time. You just want to have any big, uh, you know, big things that you forgot with a large sum of money. <laughs> so. it, it, and when you talk about large sums of money, you, you, what you're putting together really is a wide range of investment models, right? So you, talk, you and I yes. have talked about some things that are six and seven figures, right? Some bigger deals. Yes. But you also have room for those that are just starting in the PML side that are, mm -hmm. you know, give us some numbers. What kind of, what, what is, what's a common deal? What, what are we looking at? And then what are some of the ranges? Um, I think with this, with the safer deals and what I mean by that is Heather and I were just talking the other day about, you know, there's a lot of encouragement to do EMD, um, but depending on who you're doing EMD with, that's probably the most likely category where you can lose your money or the deal could fall apart. And there's not a great way to collateralize it. So you get a huge return. Like sometimes you get 360% or something return if you calculated doing that over and over and over. But it's kind of like the Robert Kiyosaki theory with stocks. I remember listening to this in his book where he said he would invest, right? in five or 10 startups knowing that almost all of them would fail except two. So EMD is better than that, but you're looking at a certain rate of losing money. So you have to consider with the rate of return on that type of lending. So I get new gators all the time. They're like, EMD, I want to do EMD. And I'm like, well, do you realize, you know, you could collateralize EMD, but it doesn't, it doesn't typically uh, get structured that way. So we do most of our deals between, I would say one to six months when people are lending uh, and then they get much bigger returns than let's say hard money or PML types of lending. So there, to me, Gator actually falls anywhere between one and 10 months you know, and I want to talk to Pace about this too, where uh, there's a lot of focus on the EMDs mm -hmm. and the really short lending in the chomps. And, and that's definitely a category, but everything up to like 12 months, you can't get hard money until you get to 12 months usually. And then after 12 months, you're looking at like a, a partnership or PM, you know, more PML if it's going into two years or three years. And there's definitely a category for that as well. 
but gator is everything i would say below like 10 months when we hit 11 12 months we try to jv partner people in for better returns um and a lot of times what we do in that case is we put people's money in for like one to three years give them a permanent equity stake so over time they make a lot of money Mm -hmm. and then the the person borrowing instead of pml they have to pay back the principal within two or three years and then that person keeps an act and i know you've structured a lot of those deals but to me everything below 10 months you can get gator type rates you get you know varying rates but you get high rates um in that category if that makes sense and i don't think people should be focusing only on these really short chomps because it's very hard to wind your money not on not to mention how much time and energy it costs the reality to me of doing that uh let's say it's two-day lens can you imagine lending doing all the paperwork for 150 what what are we 365 days so 100 and i mean it's it's not the way to do it in my opinion better my, to keep it in a little bit longer and my favorite story there is actually cindy <laughs> cindy uh-huh. book um when we first met we were both in gator and yeah. um, we were doing gator deals and cindy was very very focused on the short term chomp 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 right those quick turnarounds i mean like seven days to 14 days anything over 30 days she was definitely saying no to and yeah. in a very short period of time you know, maybe three months we came <laughs> to the realization that constantly chasing that next deal is a chore it, it's, it's a it's a time it's exhausting because it's, it's exhausting you always gotta be looking for the next deal otherwise your money's Yes, you made a high interest rate on this very short term, but then your money sits idle for two, three weeks or, or longer or till you more, find the next one yeah. or more, right? And so it was that trade off. And finally, we both went like, oh, we found a PML opportunity, put the money in there, give me a good, a decent return, and I can go focus on the, the things that I really wanted to focus on, which is properties. And not yeah. chase the gator deals all the time. And I'm sure there's people in here that in that group that that's what they really want to do is chase the money deals, right? And chase the EMDs and the transactional lendings and the double closes. They think they do. Until they think they, they do, do it. right? <laughs> but but I'm, I'm sure serious. that's a, yeah. I've seen it like you have over and over and over again. I had okay. one guy said he was spending three hours a week trying to chase, you know, and then he was like, I have too much other business that i have to take care of i can't it doesn't make sense anymore you know so i think heather is back let me see did you want to come back to the stage (laughs) we'll see if my uh internet connection gotta love florida (laughs) i thought maybe you just want to go back out and enjoy the sun a little longer (laughs) nope i got enough of that this weekend (laughs) Mm-hmm. Oh well, glad you made it back. I was looking for your your number. I thought I had you on speed dial. All I have is Jess's number, so that's going to make sure you're yeah. all right. Yeah, just, just internet connection. <laughs> we'll see if it remains stable. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, Jess, t- talk to us a little bit about where you're at right now. What you and Heather are building, and what what mm-hmm. are the next steps with that? Uh, What we're building is a huge network, you know, company to help people lend. So not only do we help, you know, teach people while they're going through the process, but like we were just talking about a lot of, a lot of people, their main focus is in other areas of real estate. So if they're, let's say someone's a flipper, they're busy flipping you know if somebody's acquiring a big portfolio they're busy chasing you know more properties even people who are lending you know you get to this point where uh you don't want it to be your full-time job or you don't have as much time and so we've started to build something where it 
can not only be more passive, you know, but it also hold kind of holds people's hand through the whole process where we're looking at every single piece because we felt like connecting. I mean, hopefully this is not offensive to anybody who's been doing this, but what I've seen when there's just a pure connection and then the connector gets paid and steps out of the deal is there's a lot of stuff that happens in between the connection and then funding everything. And so you end up with some of the problems that we were talking about. And um, when I met Heather, you know, Heather told me she's never done it that way, that she keeps an eye on the entire process. And I said, you know what, that's the way to do it. Because I feel like there's responsibility there when you connect two people, if you happen to not know one person as well, or there's a piece missing, then something could go wrong. And I've actually, um, there's, there's a few connectors in the community where uh, there's almost, you know, been situations where people will not go back to those people now because they connected, something went wrong, and then there was a huge problem if that makes sense. And I know that that's those two parties responsibility at the end of the day, but when you're connecting, you have a responsibility to do that responsibly. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> so if you step out completely, you're creating some bad situations without knowing it. So I knew that when I looked at everything right away. And um, like I said, my intention for building a money division has shifted into something much bigger that's helping a lot more people. But um, so we're here to help, you know, when we're also here to help connectors. So people who've been connecting and stepping out, we're working with those connectors as deal managers, where we have TCs, underwriters, you know, they can say, here's the deal I'm communicating with the person who needs money. And then we go to our network and say, you know, I think this deal matches you and your funds. But there's just so many layers, so many layers, even with people with money, they're all different people. And so I've had that conversation before, where if you have money to lend, your personality and what you're comfortable with is not going to match every deal. It doesn't matter how good the deal is. So there's that too. <laughs> and you're, you're seeing all sorts of deals from those short-term transactional lending EMDs, the double close, right? Those very short terms. You're seeing that yeah. through single family homes. You're seeing it through commercial work. You're getting all sorts of people coming to you saying, hey, I need funding. Right. On, on the flip side of that, you're also getting lots of people like us coming in saying, hey, yeah. I have a self-directed IRA. I'm tired of chasing down deals and evaluating them. And I'm really nervous about that, taking that first step or the next step. Can you help yeah. manage this for me and give me a good return? You were doing both yeah. sides of that coin. Um, where do you currently see your most need? Is it on the deal side from the lending side or do you see it for the investor side needing getting more private money lenders into your network? Or a little bit of I both. Think, I think there's a huge demand on both sides. But what surprised me was there were more people trying to lend out safely that we came in contact with first than there were. So there's always people, you know, working uh, to raise capital. But um, and we've built a big network of deal flow. But at first, it was actually, you know. Pe there's a lot of people sitting on a lot of funds because they're worried about deploying it safely. Mm -hmm. And so we had a few hundred people right away come. And then I was like, well, we got to get a portal in place so that there's really good tracking. And then we'll do some of it. Um, in also like a, like a folder secure folder system so that we can put we can keep track of the volume you know of deals 
So we're working on expanding that all the time. <laughs> we're also bringing people in, like I said, so that as it grows, then other people are benefiting too from being in a, in a system that they can rely on, you know? So from the sub two community, you're seeing a lot of um, creative financing deals come your way, right? So we have people that come in and say, hey, I want to take over this house subject to, subject mm -hmm. to the existing financing, but I need another $80,000 as an entry fee. The right. Money to pay the, the current homeowner out of his equity or whatever he needs, you know, maybe pay a realtor, maybe pay closing cost, maybe a little bit of rehab work. And we're going to either turn around and resell that on the market after it's cleaned up, or we're going to put a tenant in it and short-term, long-term, either or. And then 12 months later, we'll get it refinanced to something else, right? And get the private money paid back off. But mm -hmm. one of the, the obstacles that we see a lot is that note, right? That, that ask is actually not in first position because it's subject to, there is a, a mortgage on the property. How are you overcoming yeah. that hurdle? With equity or collateral. And it's, it's a combination though of things that if, if you don't know how to put all these things together, you're missing something. And if you're missing that one thing, when it comes to liquidating the property, you're going to be in trouble. So you leave a window of 30% to lower the price, you know, on top of you make sure there's enough collateral for the principal, the um, closing costs and paying the realtor, the interest, the late fees, everything has to be in there. And that needs to be a 70-30 ratio. And so you have something called, um, a deed in lieu and Heather, Heather and I were just talking about this and talking about the process when you liquidate the property. Um, so Heather's a little more of an expert in the process of when you do it, but basically you, you call the deed in lieu and a traditional loan takes a certain amount of time to be able, they have to go through foreclosure. They have to do a whole bunch of things before they can do anything like sell the property. So you're actually able to liquidate the property in second position. And if there's enough equity there, which you make sure there is in the beginning, or you have collateral, you have a whole nother house or property that they own and you liquidate that one. And then you have enough money to pay off the first position and all of the other items, all of the interest, the late fees, everything that they owe you. And that's why you're safe in second position. Yeah, basically just because you've got, you've got that quick, uh, you're able to move so quickly. Whereas the you know typical foreclosure process obviously is much longer. You can actually just you know, go in there and, and get it, you know, sold really, really quickly because you've got that deed in lieu already set to the side, just in case you ever have to execute on it. And the deed in lieu is in, in lieu of foreclosure, right? That's what that means is, is mm -hmm. basically you've already pre-signed over the property if you default. Yep. So rather than yep. going through the whole foreclosure process, you've agreed that the, the seller has agreed, I should say, to turn the the house over with the keys to you and say, yeah, I messed up. I'm, I want to do the right thing and protect you, my investor, by, by giving you the deed. And that yeah. gives you, and since you've underwritten the property correctly, right? This is to come back to that same point. Yeah. You made sure there was enough room in the numbers so that now you can go through, take over the property and do whatever needs to be done. Whether you, you continue the rehab or the drop sale, the price. drop the price, sell it fast. First thing. Yeah. Sell it fast, drop the price yeah. and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever property it is, it may not be the subject property that the money, you know, then that we see that a lot. We just saw a flipper who we will not say who everybody is, but we had a flipper just this week that we spent a lot of time with him and it showed him how we collateralize. So here's what you got to be careful of with private money 
is we've met a lot of people that when we say this is how we do it safely, they say adios and they go find a new gator, a new PML, and they basically put everyone into a risky situation. And I, I have a problem with that when they we show them this is how you protect yourself as a borrower. If everything goes wrong, you need to have enough equity or collateral that you're willing to put up, you know, to protect everyone, including yourself. And if they run the other way and go look for someone who's going to do it completely unsecured, you know, and that, that particular borrower was really angry about it. He like hung up on us and we were just like, this is crazy. Like he, there's multiple people we've met that they rely on people being new, not knowing what they're doing. And so that's that the little mommy, like helper protector in me is just like, Oh no, we can't allow this to happen. So then I was like, we got to get to pace. We got to start talking about this on YouTube and everywhere we can to hopefully just educate people. And We were told by this person that other loans don't do what we were asking for, which is not true. Uh, Not true. There's always something, something there. I'm amazed by the number of people who will come to me and ask for a private money loan for 100,000, 200,000 numbers go up, right? And then when you go back and ask for some personal information, they're like, whoa, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to give you that information. And I'm like, you're asking me oh, for a quarter million dollars. You're, you're going to, we're going to need some more information from you. Yes, we are. Because really that, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, you're just, I mean, you're kind of putting your, I mean, your project, it, it, how much confidence you have in your own self and your project is what you're willing to do, right? If if you think you you can handle it, you've got it, everything's going to work, you know, perfectly, you know, then there's no issue, right? So it's it's kind of it's a good way for us to also vet them um and really just see like how confident they are in them in their own, you know, their own work, really. That's true. That we were talking about the one I was just talking about Heather and I had a conversation after the we got hung up on where we were like, if he's so confident and so experienced, like he told us, why doesn't he own another property that he would put up his collateral like that? Like no right. problem, because he knows. So then we were like, ah, you know, red flag, red flag. And so we're always trying to figure we don't work with people on the borrowing end unless, you know, we turn down. A lot of people, especially the people that are jumping all over. There was another one too that, and I'm just using these as examples so that when you, if you're going out there looking for deals to put your money in, that if you see these things, it's a red flag. And um, the other one, we started hearing that he was, for lack of a better description, like pimping out the entire community and people were really upset about it. Like he was like making his way. And we finally figured out after we asked for collateral and all of this stuff to secure our people with private money, he was, he was going to the people that would give him money the fastest with less, with less collateral and security. You know, I think part of it when they do pay is that they want it to be easier but the other part of it is they're preying on young private money people that that you know don't know how to do what we're talking about and that upsets me you know frankly sometimes because of the message i got you know from the guy that lost his entire retirement fund so yeah. That's what we would like to change. <laughs> there, there's plenty of people eager to, to be involved. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and they yeah. want to be part of a project, but boy, you got to do it correctly. You got to be smart. So again, everybody that's listening tonight, please, you know, call Heather, call Jessa and make sure we're doing it correctly. We're happy to help and we're happy to teach too, as we help. Cause you know what I figure we're going to help everybody 
gain so much wealth eventually when we're all working together you're gonna have so much you're gonna be swimming swimming along doing your own things over here right and then and then you're gonna come to us and go now i have so much that i need you to do it here and i'm gonna go over here and so it's you become very abundant is the point <laughs> of that so we find people work with us a long time even if they're doing their own stuff on the side because eventually you're your the idea is your wealth gets so big you know that you have less you have less time to spend every week you know doing all of this for yourself and that was one of the discussions we had uh on one of our previous episodes here with macarena we're talking about building business lines of credit and if we all did that in our group right we'd have a thousand people that have a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars available what could we do as a community you know, it boggles the mind of what we I could plan. do. And, and it's as not, you multiply, you yep. have to invest. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, Shane. no, you're, <laughs> it's all good. So what you're talking about as far as collateralization, is they sometimes call that cross-collateralized uh, right. your investment, right? So mm-hmm. that means I, I want to borrow funds from you, my private money lenders, and I'm going to buy this house. You say, well, there's not enough equity in that deal to protect me. So what else do you yeah. have, right? So I say, okay, I got the, this other property or personal residence or other investment properties that if this deal goes bad, you can sell that deal and this one to make yourself whole, correct? Right. Yeah. Yes. And how difficult is it to cross collateralize another property when blending against one what's that paperwork look like uh heather i will turn that over to you i'm oh, so sorry i was thinking i was answering a chat he was <laughs> he was saying um how complicated is the paperwork when you're cross collateralizing uh it's it's basically i mean it can be a little more nuanced if you're i mean i've i've had to cross collateralize with um i think before four properties and then we were looking at one one time where we might have had to cross collateralize with 12 of them um it does add a little bit of extra work in there for extra properties like that but typically it it's about the same amount of time you know again it gets a little bit hairier and trickier if, if you've got more than a few properties um to to cross collateralize with but it a sense it it's not that much more so so, so you are going out putting a lien on those properties is that correct and again yeah. that leans most likely mm-hmm. in a second lien position yeah right. sometimes first sometimes it's in second um but yeah just because and then we so we, it's a note a deal heather oh, it's okay i'll help Let's see until Heather comes to us. Give Trust your mortgage. So, and oh, then, um, am I so Darn it. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. We hear you oh, now. You're we back. Can now. I swear. Uh, sorry, where was I? The uh, It was yeah. a deed. It's a note. Yeah. So a note. <laughs> it's stuck in the same spot. <laughs> what is a, it must what be a I, skip in the record. What I was going to interject and say is we have to check the title of each property, we need assessments, we need to do comps. So there is work on the front end and then on the back end, do you, you have to liquidate and then you've oh, got the deed you go. in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. So, you know, we have to evaluate because you're liquidating more properties too. So we have to make sure that, um, the ones uh, that we are collateralizing with, we just have to make sure that we can liquidate them quicker because there's more um, work on the other end, I guess you could say. So like there was a commercial building that we were going to cross collateralize with. And I was explaining, because I'm really familiar with commercial, that unless it has a good net operating income, cap rate, that it's not going to be easy potentially to sell. It could be a commercial property with equity. And if nothing's going on there financially, then that would be a problem, for example, to collateralize with that. So, you know, residential property, 
is the best, I would say, as far as being able to lower a price and then liquidate it. Um, not always, but that's kind of what we look for. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things to check with that, you know, title, what kind of shape the properties are in. You know, we look at everything uh, and that's part of how we make it safer. So when you're looking at um, a deal, there's a question from the audience here. Is there mm -hmm. a percentage of the loan? It's it's really not the loan amount. It's the the ratio of what the expected so, price of the property is versus really the loan. Is that so um, basically you have to be careful when you're collateralizing because right now the market is not uh, consistent, if that makes sense. So you're kind of trying to anticipate, okay, could, could the prices go down? You know, are they, they're not going up right now. Um, so you've got to get a, a current assessment, make sure there's nothing on the title. Um, so it's not always based on the loan at all. You're going to look at the loan amount I, maybe I'm misunderstanding to the question and I apologize if I am, but you, you would take whatever's owed on the loan and then you would do recent comps. You have to make sure it's not based on something old, if that makes sense. Cause you have to, you have to capture the current market so that you have the correct value. And then you have to kind of anticipate when this loan is over, right? In six months, do you anticipate, which we don't have a crystal ball, but you know, do we anticipate any problems with the market? And then we have to factor that in, you know, to collateralizing it. So that's kind of why, where we get that 30% drop is with 30%, at least you're not going, okay, I'm only going to drop the price 10%. You have a, a huge window where you can lower the price significantly so that hopefully for that window of time that the money's out, you can capture um, whatever the market will be doing. So yeah, hopefully that answers that question. And, and I, I hope so too. And if I messed up the question, please raise your hand. <laughs> we'll pull you up and you can ask the question um, as well. But just uh, right now, as far as deals that you're helping get funded, is there anything uh -huh. that you're not doing as far as real estate goes? You know, all sorts of deals with single family homes, right? Short terms, rehabs, fix and flips, the the buy and holds, those. I'm trying, I, honestly, what we do less of, which will sound strange with Gator, but maybe I explained that well in the beginning is we don't favor like the EMDs and stuff as much um, just because they're not as secure for people. Uh, but as far as, funding all different kinds of real estate we do for sure i like i said i'm more of i have more of the knowledge and the commercial and you know i like like you shane i like rv parks and storage units and commercial and um and then we do single family we do a lot of like um flippers we do less uh wholesale deals i would say unless they're flipping you know with with the wholesale because it's a higher amount you know versus um maybe the equity in the property if that makes sense you know like cash deals uh we do do those but i would say less we do sub twos and seller finances um anything where there's enough equity and then like I said we collateralize it if not and we also choose people with experience if they're new we we won't put our private capital people in those deals unless they're partnering with somebody with experience and so we help people that are new though we help them go okay this is <laughs> this is a good situation we can get you in like I've met a couple brand new sub two students who are really good at construction. Like they can go in there and they can 
uh, do little renovations that could cost a lot of money if it was done outside the partnership. And what they're bringing in as a new student is they don't have all the knowledge to get the deal done. They don't know how to raise the capital, but they're going to go in and do all the little renovation for basically the cost of materials. And so we'll look for people like that um, where they're bringing value of some sort or they're helping manage it, you know, for a year. And then we'll partner them with people, um, either people who are more active with private capital that have certain skills, or we will partner instead of in lieu of taking, um, you know, fees that we normally ask for in different ways. Um, we, we will partner in and then we have a lot of experience with short term rental mid term, you know, doing all different kinds of things. Uh, so when we have time, we'll do that too. And that's kind of how we help all the different people and different experience levels. So how many, what, what percentage of your deals involving JVs? You're not just providing funds, but you're actually partnering with people. We've had a lot of them lately. It's funny because there's waves, you know, of, we had a, we had a wave of people that were running away, you know, from collateral for a minute there and then now we've had a whole bunch of people come our way that are uh they're doing buy and holds but mm -hmm. they're like newer in the community so we're we're jving in um private capital and then someone with experience like i said whether it's us or we're finding uh private capital so that seems to be happening more and more and then, like I said, we meet a lot of people with capital who, I mean, we just met one, I think I said earlier, that he, he's got a ton of money coming in from his businesses and has a ton of money to deploy. And I said, uh, where, where's all your assets? <laughs> so I meet people all the time. That, and that's really shocking to me as a business coach that like these people who are super successful with all of this money that we end up coaching them on, you know, you need assets and depreciation this year, right? Or you're going to pay two or $300,000. You could be investing. That could be like 10 sub two houses that you could be partners in that you're depreciating. So that was a kind of a weird offshoot that I didn't totally expect. So we have people with money where we're like purely hunting for investments. And we have a whole calling team that we're starting to find sub twos and seller finance specifically, because we feel that those are the best because you can get so much more property, you know, with a low entry fee, basically. So we're, we're hunting for lots of those in the top mm -hmm. investment areas. Or bigger projects like you and I do, Shane. <laughs> Someone was asking about um, how, how do the people work with you, and, and do, you, or do you have a link to a portal yet? And I, Heather answered that on the side, but I, I don't know if everybody can see the comments. But what what do you have going on as far as uh, your your portal, your website? What do you have? I know you don't. Uh, you, things in, are in the works, so we're in process because with the software that we need, I'm very experienced on that end between all of the hospitality experience that I've had that, um, you know, picking what we're going to use has been the hardest because we the last thing we want to do is onboard everyone in, into that software and then have some big problem with functionality because it's, it's going to be very serious because we're going to be handling people's you know, deals and deploying funds and we have to keep track of everything. So we do it now with between Heather and I and our deal managers, you know, we keep um, private folders and we have an intake form uh, when people need funding. And then um, as far as our private capital folks, they typically tell we onboard them and figure out who they are, what kind of funds they have, what kind of deals they're most interested in. And then we consult them a little bit 
that's what I was talking about. I, I really was, was shocked, like I said, to the, how many people were making so much money. And I met one guy over five years, he's lost a million dollars in taxes to the government. Yeah. And he, he cracked me up. He's the one I'll never stop quoting that said, he went from reptilian to mammalian overnight when <laughs> I told him that. <laughs> I just stop and go, is that even, I had to think about that one for a minute, but it really made me laugh. But he go, he told me I wasn't even thinking about that. And I was like, okay, you know, we got to get people invested into not only little properties, but properties that are these bigger projects you know like the rv parks and the resort properties because they have a lot of um, depreciation and with depreciation i believe if your partners don't need as much as you do you can actually be like a 20 percent partner and if your partners don't need depreciation you do you can take a larger percentage of depreciation is my understanding than that's interesting. Uh, you, you are invested in, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we had Mitchell Armstrong. Um, is, he's been on to talk about mobile homes. And there are some things that I learned from him about how you can take an asset and like a mobile home park, right? Million dollars, uh -huh. multi-million dollar project. And um, he depreciated it over a very short period. Uh, time period i mean like yeah a huge percent of that they like in six months they took a, a huge deduction and saved all other taxes that he was going to pay that year and was able to, to yeah. bring the, all that cash that you're going to give back to the government and bring it back in house and deploy it to another project yeah yeah well so there's there's so many loopholes we have to have a, a tax consultant in here yeah anybody know a good Definitely. one let me know and uh we'll, we'll see if we can't get them convinced to, to come on and, and help us. <laughs> There's some pretty creative things you can do. And, and I'm not a tax expert, but I know enough that I've been able to say to some of our private capital folks that, okay, <laughs> we need to, we need to focus on this. If we make you more money, this is hasta la vista, right? To half of it, <laughs> if right. we don't get you more assets. And then we've got private capital people that that's kind of all they do they're not they're not experts in building these huge portfolios and so that's where we ended up like i said we work with asset building and just through our network of people who need money or projects that we're finding that are larger we'll help we'll help them look at you know things that they can invest in because you you hit a point where you have to you know once you multiply your funds enough. Otherwise, it amazes me like, you know, Pace and Abraham. I mean, I think I won't say how much, but Pace is getting up there and he, mm -hmm. he depreciates everything, pretty much everything. That's why he's pr acquiring so many properties. Then you hear the stories about the people that buy properties that are like 200 a month in the negative because yeah, they sure. need write offs. You know, yeah, I would say that about, and you see that from people like Pay sometimes is that you yeah. look at a deal and it's like, I would never buy that deal because it doesn't cash flow for me. But he, mm -hmm. he's on a different level. He's buying that not just for the, the cash flow today, but for the depreciation mm -hmm. this year. Right. And, yes. and there are people that do that. And I'm not, I'm not there well, yet. <laughs> we, we will be there one day. That's our goal. That's our goal. A lot of everyday people you know, be free financially. That's, that's what got me so excited about all of this. Cause like I said, I coached businesses for a very long time and I saw people make a lot of money in the spa world and they were never able to kind of free themselves from the rat race, so to speak. They were stressed still all the time. So that's one of the most exciting things about all of this is just helping people not only multiply their money, but invest in assets and, you know, that creates freedom and generational wealth. So.
Sorry, I was answering a side <laughs> oh, chat. I, I, I haven't even read all of the chats. Hopefully my camera didn't disappear. <laughs> there so what, what's the best way that people then can get a hold of you now to work with you while you're getting your portal set up? I can drop a link in. Um, Cindy and I have um, a Google Sheets document that we can capture everybody's name in. Or is it best just to reach yeah. out to you and Heather via email? Are there were there any other um, questions that people had, or was everybody asking while we were chatting? Well, we've kind of been answering some questions along, but this is a good time to stop and just kind of ask, "Where's everybody at? Anybody have a question?" I'm sure there are plenty of questions out there. You even lost Cindy. I am here, but no. my uh, kids, so I'm hiding again. Um, <laughs> so if, I mean, is every deal that you put together, Jessa and Heather, are they a different price or are they, I think there was a one question yeah. here. Um, so how does that work? in a transaction? Uh, it depends if we're, you know, pooling people together. I think what, when Heather and I met, when everything was a little bit smaller, we were focusing on if people had like 50K or more to deploy. But then what Shane and I have been talking about is how we can get people starting out with less funds, you know, to be able to pool them together and deploy funds so really we work on all different sized deals we see smaller ones come in we see really large ones come in and then we spend a lot of time analyzing everything and making sure it's actually a deal before we come back to anybody but we we found people along the way you know who do a lot of work uh in the community and um let's see investing or flipping or you know they're more experts who are asking for money and then we have the new people like i said we make sure it's still still safe the way that we do it or we just tell them you know if they're too new to kind of know what they're doing and there's it's just not a good deal then we tell them it's not a good deal keep looking <laughs> you know so I, I mean we've had everything from like five or ten thousand dollars up to like a request for millions in a huge syndicate deal um where they were doing like 350 houses and building those out and we i've seen a lot of those larger end items and mm -hmm. my bandwidth isn't there at the moment i got so many other things on my plate um i'm excited to work with you and heather just for that outlet because i know there's been several things yeah. that have stacked up on my plate and i go boy i wish i could put some attention to that but to be able to take those things and be able to afford them to you and say just is there a deal here if so can you get it funded and help the people out from our community because we have you know we're almost 1200 members now and we have all sorts of people who are on both sides of the coin again they have funds they want to deploy or they're out looking for deals and then always looking for capital. Yeah. Well, and like, like I was telling you, we've got, we've got deal finders, deal managers. So we'll have to define all of this uh, better, you know, so that we can all work together as a community. Cause I think what Heather and I are building can be a structure that will really you know it's something that wasn't there when i went into gator and i immediately started hunting for heather <laughs> <laughs> and then i went to heather and asked i was like what how are you doing this because you're doing something right and there's all of these pieces missing and people need help they need this this is like a monster need and um so we're we're building it out, but it's going to be very big. So the foundation has to be strong. And in the meantime, we can get to know each person who wants to work with us individually. We can book a call, onboard them, 
um, and then present, you know, what, what we have going. Cause we have multiple people that we work with now and it's just going to get better. And, and I think, I thank both you and Heather for joining our group, our Facebook group. So I know that you are always there um, within the community. If people have questions, they can reach you there. Yeah. Um, your email addresses, is that the better way to get hold of you as well? I think um, Heather dropped email addresses in early on. Yeah, I dropped those in there. I'm just going to find it and copy it and paste it and drop it again in case people didn't catch it or came in later. I'm going to put my um, phone number. I am best not through email, as funny as that sounds. I'll put my cell and I'll put actually cell. let me let's just put maybe our blink cards in the chat and you guys can save us on your phone because this has the links to the website and everything. All right, everyone, uh, this, this is a special thing. They're giving you personal <laughs> access to them. So please, please yeah. uh, a, a, treat it with respect, with respect, but but also, you know, you know, show them some love as well and send them some business. Yeah, I'll put, uh, Heather, I know you're working on another. I'll Actually, put both of our I've, blank. I made a new one, so hang on, let me, I'll, I'll send oh, Okay, it. put that in there. Yeah, I've just got to figure out That's the best to... for now. I'm very responsive on, um, sorry, I was poking my screen <laughs> there. <laughs> I thought um, you were waving your finger at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm best on like chat and text, although as everything's growing, we're getting more and more messages. So if it takes me, if it takes me a day or two, uh, uh, there's probably just a lot of messages. We'll have more help soon. And then when we have the portal up and running, it, that's going to be a huge help because we should just have web pages, you know, where that are secure, where people can put everything in and then it'll go into our database and then we're hoping we're hoping using like ai or some kind of you know programming that we can do some soft matches but we're setting up different categories um for i think points that we're going to ask our private money people again when i got into this and got to know our private money people it wasn't as straightforward as you think you know we need to know if they need to build assets uh, they're high risk low risk we treat everything with low risk or excuse me um you know we don't we treat other people's money i guess better than our own and we have a very low tolerance for risk in these deals um but we do have some private capital investors, you know, they have a very high risk tolerance. And so we, we want to uh, really get to know everybody and have, ha when we onboard, we don't want it to just be a call where something gets lost in the mix. We really want to know who we're working with and have enough people working with us. And so that's the other thing is we're not just building this for Heather and I, we're building this to continuously work with the communities, you know, and make make this all better for all of us, where we can all benefit from this. I think it's the best way. That what I see as a benefit, um, even to myself, is I get very emotional over a deal, <laughs> right? Yes. And you know, sometimes, oh, this is a, a shiny, nice, shiny object. Oh, look, squirrel, right? And <laughs> And it's just on to that the next thing that's exciting. And you just want to like, oh, I want to help. Or this, you know this person, you want to help them, right? Um, yeah. But by taking that deal and I can run it through Heather and Jessa, I've separated my emotion from the facts, right? The numbers of the deal now will speak for itself. And now I have two brilliant people who are going to double check that and say, yes, Shane, this is a good deal. Now you can be super happy and excited over it um, and not just get, oh, super happy, and excited and go into a deal that the numbers aren't right and get burned in the end. Um, so yeah. I think it's, it's a great thing that you're offering just to help people who, who are already into the deal. But just that little bit of separation really helps facilitate 
a safer deal. A great way to think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's that's it's not an easy subject what you were just talking about, Shane. So it's something I saw immediately in Gator. People wanted money and they're like, what are you doing? You know, with the private capital and then the private capital was like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, and then like the whole and then it was like two ships and then I thought this isn't connecting, you know, where but I think what it was is the structure like you're talking about. It was having some sort of structure and evaluation where it isn't emotional. It's like here this this is the way it is. It's safe. It's stand there's a standard and then then people can rock and roll, you know, on both sides. It's just so. like everyone likes to, you know, likes to when they're comping too. I mean, the the natural desire to comp sometimes is like, oh, let me make it fit what I want it to fit. And absolutely, and, you know, and obviously you have to take yourself out of that. And and that's what you know that's what you're saying here. So it's yeah, that's what we uh we want to help with. So, uh, again, any questions from the audience? Otherwise, we, we really appreciated Jessa and Heather's time. And please promise us when your portal is done, you'll come back and tell us how everything's going and give us updates. Yeah. And oh, yeah. in, the, in the meantime, I did drop a link out there. If people don't want to or can't uh, get reached by email. I'll also leave that portal link out in the Facebook group. I'll think I'll, I'll just tag that so it's always ever present. Um, and that way just a little place so people can put their information and we'll get it over to Jessa and Heather. Um, anything we can do to help out the community. I, I appreciate it. And this is an item that's been missing. So thank you very much for putting it together. Thank you. We yeah. appreciate you. I'll be podcasting with you soon, Shane. <laughs> Sounds good. I appreciate it. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, thank you so much. Thank you, Heather, for uh, coming out of the sun for us and joining us. I'm, I'm glad your, your internet allowed it. So Yes, me too. Thanks for having us. And yes, I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Yes, very soon. All right. <laughs> well, thank you all and have a wonderful night. Good Bye. night. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.